In algebra, you learn about the slope of a line, which is equal to the ratio of the rise to the run. In other words, slope equals rise over run. Here you see that the rise is about half as long as the run, so the line has a slope of about one half. The slope on a curve is constantly changing, so to figure it, you need to switch to calculus. Just like the line you saw before, this line has a slope of about one half, and the slope is the same at every point between A and B. But you can see that, unlike the line, the steepness of the curve is changing between A and B. At A, the curve is less steep than the line, and at B, the curve is steeper than the line. What do you do if you want the exact slope at, say, point C? Zoom in. When you zoom in far enough, infinitely far, the little piece of the curve becomes straight and you can figure the slope the old-fashioned way. That's how differentiation works. Because the derivative of the curve is the slope, which equals rise over run, or rise per run, the derivative is also a rate, a this per that, like miles per hour or gallons per minute. The name of the particular rate simply depends on the units used on the x and y axes. The two graphs here show a relationship between distance and time. They could represent a trip in your car. Here's a regular algebra problem. If you know where A and B are, you can determine the slope between A and B. In this problem, that slope gives you the average rate in miles per hour for the interval from A to B. In this problem, you can use the derivative of the curve to determine the exact slope or steepness at point C. While both problems determine slope, the second one gives the single point on the curve that is the instantaneous rate in miles per hour at the point of C. For that, you need to go beyond algebra to calculus to get the answer.